Romantic has a very interesting history. Um, uh, through American history, it's sort of widely believed that Christopher Columbus or Amerigo Spucci, um, those people have uh, found uh, the Americas and were some of the first European settlers on the you know eastern coast came as a result of those explorations. But actually, it's um, it's not widely known that the Scandinavians, the Vikings, have first uh, traveled to the North American eastern eastern coast and were, um, you know, fairly prolific around uh, the northern parts of the country and coming down as far south as Connecticut, actually. So, um, Willimantic has a very strong connection to those early Viking settlers and explorers, uh, especially one uh, named William. So, in the Norse saga, there's a story of William William the Explorer, a small band of Vikings landed on the coast of modern-day Massachusetts or Connecticut, encountered Native Americans, and um, eventually proceeded to explore further inland. And they had these fairly small vessels for going inland into the heart of the country. And the vessels were, of course, Viking boats, uh, mainly lapstrake built canoes that were maybe about 19, 20 feet in length. So William, along with his men, went up the Thames River and at some point they took one of the rivers feeding the Thames and went up that river. In ancient Norse language, Mantic means river. So that river became known as the Willy Mantic River. From William, the explorer, the, the Norse chief, so it was Williams River. So the Norsemen went up um, the Willimantic River and uh, found this actually idyllic place. They, they, they started to experience some rapids and they couldn't go further up river so they pulled their boats out and started a small community there. Eventually they brought livestock and they started families and so Willimantic was named after William the Explorer's River. So as they settled into this land, they had a very interesting relationship with uh, the native people and they, they married and, and interbred with the, with the native population. And uh, a kind of a people emerged that were very interested in exploration, self-governed, strong-willed, uh, independent. Really a wonderful breed of people came out of that union. For the next 600 years, the descendants of William lived on Williams River and lived a very happy life. Their traditions were partially native traditions and also Viking traditions. The boat building remained uh, an integral part of Willimantic and as Willimantic is known as the Thread City, all of the rope and everything needed for the boats was, was manufactured here and started with the early Viking settlers. The boats are lap straight canoes that are made with a keel and a keelson on the bottom and then built in uh, laps mainly out of white pine that, that is connected with screws. Actually that, that was another invention of uh, Williams, uh, the screw where before the copper nail was used William invented the screw and had a very sort of crude way of uh, screwing the laps together. That was a major technological achievement of the Vikings. So as this community flourished and grew and lived happily in Williams Mantic, eventually uh, other Europeans came, the French, the British. Norse history and tradition kind of started to fade out a little bit. But nonetheless, uh, within the community there were small enclaves of uh, of those people that were still practicing boat building and uh, even if the British for instance outlawed boat building they would still build their boats in their in their farmyards and in uh, animal pens and things of that nature so so the tradition kind of continued so the, the the actual Viking boat building techniques never died out up until this day there are still several craftsmen that know this um, lap strake uh, boat building technique that the Vikings brought to Willimantic and named the town Williams Mantic. And uh, we resurrected this technique because we're actually uh, direct descendants of those people. You know, if you look at my red beard, I'm, I'm descended from 
William the Explorer, the Viking chief that came here and settled in Bulimantic some 600 years ago. So that's an interesting uh, bit of history about Willimantic and the uh, um, Connecticut region in general that's been really overlooked, but uh, the Viking history is really um, not promoted. But we're here to build the boats and to continue our lifestyle like we've lived here in Willimantic for 600 years. So it started in October of 2006, uh, a group of us got together to build a boat in the town of Willimantic, Connecticut. And uh, we wanted to use it for some actions to share what we had done with other people and to contribute to some discussions about what was happening in the town. And the first thing we did was to take it out to the local street festival. We pulled it through the street and projected a video of the Willimantic River onto the sail of the boat. And we were just walking through the festival, talking to people about the river, past, present, and future. The river is, is right next to where we're, we're walking, uh, right parallel to Main Street. And um, it's not really a very important feature of the town at this point. It's kind of forgotten over there because it isn't really providing any industry anymore. Willimantic used to be a big factory city. It was the largest thread producer in the country at one point, but now it's kind of down in its luck. You know, the mills are long gone and uh, the town isn't really doing so great economically. But, you know, there's also definitely a movement going on to really make the most out of the town because there are some people there that really care about it and we wanted to add on to that energy that's that's a very positive thing there so we, we were trying to kind of put the river back on Main Street the river was important at one time and it it can still be important it's kind of what we were getting at and we wanted to do more with that so we uh Another day we got everybody together and went out and tried the boat in the water, you know, to, to test whether it would really work or not. Of course, the whole time we were building it, people were asking us, you know, will it float? That was the big question. We took it out to this lake, and it, it actually, at first, it, it, it didn't sit right um, in the water because the, the bottom of the boat was too light, and it, it was very tippy. It was sitting up high and just... You know, it floated, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't uh, stay stable enough to really use it. So we, we happened to find this huge pile of rocks sitting along the uh, the bank of the lake where we were, and uh, we just had a, we had a bunch of people there. So we started a chain gang and started, you know, filling up the boat with these rocks, and that worked out great. Um, and also, it was cool because we felt like we were kind of using the old ways, the ways of our ancestors making it work, you know, kind of making making do with what we had. So uh, it's been a theme of the whole project, really. And, uh, you know, the boat worked great after that. We took it, we'd sailed around for the day. We did, we tried to sail and it worked fine. You know, we were getting used to using the square sail. And it was a really celebratory thing to get it, finally get it into the water and, and uh, feel good about what we had done and get, it, get the whole group together and, um, you know, have a laugh. It was great. Ha <laughs> ha